Hello. 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 Yeah, I think he has a, an issue with uh, his microphone, but uh, I think we can start now. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Can you uh, please share the screen with me? Okay, I have it already. Fantastic. Okay. Uh, let me see. What's missing there? Just give me a few seconds, please, before we get started. All right, guys. So, do we get started now? Mm. Yes. Okay. We can, we can start now. Or you want to just give an opportunity to the other guys to join? Are they going to follow on Facebook? I don't know. I think others will uh, join along the way and uh, the rest can follow from the Facebook. Okay, fantastic. All right, well, first of all, guys, uh, thanks for the opportunity. Um, uh, it might be the first for you guys. I've been doing this for a while now. Because of the situation, you know, uh, we have been through a lot of things here and there. Uh, hopefully, it's getting better. So thanks again for the opportunity. Um, I pick a subject. I couldn't find anything better than this. Let me explain quickly. Um, as coaches, we need to be relevant and we need to be kept abreast of whatever happened at the highest level because no matter what, we're gonna copy it. One way or the other, uh, partially, totally, or at least we get inspired by what they do. And uh, the game as basketball has progressed a lot. Um, the evolution has been dramatically uh, been boosted over the last five, six years for a number of reasons that I'm going to detail afterwards. Um, I apologize for the second degree on the first page in the introduction. Uh, we went effectively from the Stone Age to to Steph Curry, and I, I, I put Steph Curry for one good reason. He's probably the guy who produced the biggest change in the game because of his ability to shoot three points. I'm gonna go back to this very quickly now. I will not talk about defense today. I will stick to offense. Um, for those who are being around the game for a long time, guys who are in their 40s, 50s, maybe 60s. You know, the game has changed dramatically. We went through a lot of changes. And for me, the last five years where is where the game has grown a lot in terms of offense. I'm going to sustain what I say now with statistics, okay? Uh, what the American are calling analytics. So the offense has changed the game, the way it's played. It has changed also the defense, but today we're going to talk about offense specifically. It has changed the way it is coached. It has changed the way the players are trained. Just a quick word on that. You need to go towards a form of training that emphasizes mobility, agility, and versatility. It also changes the way the players are recruited. Wherever you're coming from, if you want to be given an opportunity to play professional, semi-professional in your own country, overseas, get a scholarship in the US, then you're going to have to bring a skill set that people want to see. If you're one dimensional players, I'm not saying you're going to get rejected, but 
people will want more than that. Let's walk back in time a little bit. We went through stages. Stage, let's say number one, the dominance of the bigs. That was the era of Akeem, Kareem, Shaq, all those guys. Uh, most of the offense revolved around that position. The ball had to go to down low to the bigs and were asked to go one-on-one, -on -one, beat the double team, kick the ball back out. And then we went to a new breed of players. And the game moved to the forwards. From being a game mostly controlled by the bigs, it became a game mostly controlled by the swing man, the small forward, the small guard, the big guard, sorry, Jordan Cook. Now, what about that three-point line? How does it impact on today's game? Let's again walk back in time. I don't know if you know that, but you know, the, the three-point line was created in the ABA, American Basketball Association. And that line originally was made for the small guys, for the small men, to give them a chance to contribute in the game. The, the game was dominated in those days by the bigs. So the idea in the ABA was to say, okay, look guys, we're going to, provide something that you can use and then you can contribute to the game. So that was for the small guys, that was the one. And the second reason, the ABA said, okay, if you're down two points with a couple of seconds to go, the three points line, if you have the ball in your hands, will give you a chance to win. So that was the original idea. Now you're gonna see it's completely different. It's not about the smalls, it's not about the last shot, it's about a lot more than this. The second triggering factor for me is the pace of the game has increased. The game is flowing now more than ever. Uh, you hardly see, but you still see, the slow pace type of thing of court offense, but most likely you're gonna see a flowing game when you go from your transition into your offense, et cetera, et cetera. So you're gonna need different players to play that kind of game. And that's where we are now, in my view, in my opinion. The philosophy these days is, and you may agree or you may disagree. I hope you disagree so we can have a discussion on that. A three is more than two. And that's why, well, that's why coaches GMs are pushing toward a game played around the three-point line. And then I told you, numbers don't lie, do they? Sometimes they do, sometimes they don't. Now, we're going to go through a couple of graphs and shots just for you to see where we are now as coaches. Okay, what numbers have to say? This is the NBA three points attempt per game per season. End of 2018, we were standing at 29, 29 shots. And you can see in the 80s, it was 2.8. There was a marginal use of the three point line. Now we're standing at 29. The EuroLeague, playing only 40 minutes, as you know, stand at 27 which is pretty much on par with the NBA. So you can tell that in the two biggest, most successful, most, most visible leagues, the three is the weapon of choice. Now, the change was gradual at first, but by the early 2000s, teams were drastically reducing their mid-range in favor of the more efficient three. And really, it was end of 2015, beginning of 2016, where the game really started to change. You will remember that the era where Golden State was on top of their game with the style of play that they promoted, the small ball, emphasize on the three, and people try to copy it. Um, we gonna talk later on about small ball, 
how do we do it, with what kind of players, in what situation, but just to stay with a number, to substantiate what I'm trying to, sh to tell you and to show you is one in three field goal attempt is a three these days. Now, what about the others? We spoke about EuroLeague, we spoke about NBA. Let's talk quickly about NCAA, which is the college university, college basketball in the US. I can let you read it and you can go through it. But look, the bottom line is we are looking at pretty much the same numbers or above. NCA basketball is the closest thing that we have to our FIBA basketball. People are shooting basically 40 to 47 percent of their shot behind the arc, which is to me huge. But this is how the game is played these days. Villanova won the championship. You have the numbers, you have the stats. Just keep it for yourself. I'm not trying to sell you something. This is not, probably not the way you want to play, but this is how it is now. Maybe it's going to inspire you to do something different. Maybe you're going to stick to your gun and play the way you have been playing so far. Maybe you're already playing that style. Who knows? Now, this is important. This is maybe the most important. What is the best way to score statistically? No, this is the point average per position. Let's assume that I'm going to put the mouse. If you go below one point per position, you're not doing that good. So according to numbers, the best way to score in basketball these days of the cut. The cut can be a guy just cutting to the basket, receiving the pass and, and scoring, just a basic give and go. It can be a big man running to the basket. It can be a guy cutting to the basket after a screen in a type of flex offense, for example. Second best to score, the transition. Take a shot, a two or a three, before the defense is set which make a lot of sense. The game is fast. Defensive transition has to be as fast as the offense. You're going to have opportunities. You're going to use them. Third best, the roll man. That's why we see so many pick and roll these days. We're going to talk about the pick and roll again later on. How it is played now. What are the options, the adjustments that people make to make it even more efficient than it is already. The fourth best is the spot up. So you have somebody driving, kicking the ball back out to someone who catches and shoots it. And then I'm going to go down to this, the post-up. This is, in their view, one of the less efficient ways to score. It is not in FIBA basketball. In the NBA, it is. I know in some other part of the world, post play, the post up is still of importance based on the fact that we still have big guys who can play down low. And although the NBA have moved away from that a lot, we still have to incorporate that into our game. Just to mention quickly, isolation is also a weak part of scoring the basketball. You're not convinced you need to shoot threes. What does shoot, who does shoot, by the way? The small or the bigs or everybody? Now this is a chart that I found very interesting and it's really updated. This is a graph that shows you where the shots are taken. We gonna stay on that graph for just a couple of seconds. This is where we are now. The modern era, early century. You will notice corner threes, corner threes. There is an increase. It do score in the lane still, but not that much on the post up. The baseline jumpers is mostly gone. 
and you're going to see toward the elbow, there is not much left. Most of the shots are concentrating beyond the three points line and in the paint. That's why they devise their offense around those criteria. If you get an opportunity to watch the Houston Rockets, this is exactly the shot charts that they want to have in each in every game they play. They want nothing in between. They want everything here, whether it's a layup, a floater, a big catching, and they want threes. These are the highest percentage shot that you can find in modern basketball these days. Now, the question before was, who's, who's, who's shooting the ball? And I said, the small, the bigs, or everybody? So I'm going to go to the extreme. So far, mostly perimeter players. Stretch fours, but also now, this is the evolution, stretch five. Brook Lopez, as you know, is the center for the Milwaukee Bucks. He's a seven-footer. And let's see what he went from 216 to 218, which is a very short span. It's about four years only. You will notice that 1% of his shots were threes. Today, 65 of his shots are threes. And you look at these short shots. This is pretty much what we just saw before in relation with where do we want to shoot the ball, where are the highest percentages, what are the lowest, what do we want, what do we don't want. I was just talking now about stretch four, stretch five. Stretch four is, has been in the pipe for a long time already. Um, we wanted to give an opportunity to the players to attack the lane and by not having two guys down low or one eye, one low, we really wanted to have something that was a good option for people to drive towards the basket, whether from the top of the key, from the baseline, for the 45 extent. So I just showed you in on display four photos from the dark ages and from the modern era. We have a quick word on it very quickly. That was the kind of spacing that you would find back in the 70s. You had a lot of people in the low block. They used to run what is the floor pit now, which was called the double stack of single double. And then you can research, research that on the net if you're interested. Then towards the 80s, you had Kareem, and you had AC Green, and you have Katrambis, and you have the lane completely packed, and it was difficult to attack from here, from the angle, from that one, because there was no space to go. So really, the idea was to feed and let the guy play one-on-one. -on -one. The fourth one is actually the third one. This is Team USA. Uh, back in 212 or 213. This is the kind of spacing that we have now. It's the old old shoe, but revamped to modern basketball is in 220. See, the idea is to have a lot of space to attack the basket. To, you need to fill the corners with shooters and you have guys 45 extended and put to the extreme and they are the master of that the small ball of the Houston Rockets with no centers at all Robert Covington is the acting center but being a three man a small forward by trade they have that kind of spacing and they have that kind of offense they have highlighted the fact that they want all of that wide open for the guys to drive in. On to the next one. Okay. Um, I apologize for the, for, for the Q&A that I'm putting you through. Okay, coach, we space the floor. What do we do now? 
Well, players, first of all, we are going to pick and DHO. Okay, you know the pick and roll now is, and I checked that last night, 38 to 41% in, in, in most offenses. I mean, let, let's put it this way. Uh, you're going to have a pick and roll. If either it's early offense or middle of the offense or towards the end of the offense. But most, most of the time, you're going to find a pick and roll in your set. Most of the time. DHO is a dribble handoff. It's when somebody dribbles towards somebody dribble at and the guy comes and takes the ball. We're gonna have some videos after that to make it a little bit more realistic for, for you guys. So that's nothing new because pick and roll has been in use for a long time, DHO as well, except except we are going to get into our offense using the pick and roll. And in the subdivision, you have the drag, the double drag, the Spanish pick and roll, maybe a stagger. And all of that is if you don't get that entry pass into the system. Now, as I said before in the intro, we used to play the game in a certain way. I went through this. As a point guard, I was asked to bring the ball up, cross midcourt, and cross side and wait for my guys to get set, and then we get into our offense. It just doesn't work like this anymore. The point guard might bring the ball up, or somebody might bring the ball up. And then you want your guys to be spaced out, and you can get into your offense right away. So you go from transition into your offense. You know the old definition of primary break, secondary break, early offense, state offense. I don't think that's in existence anymore, regardless of where you play. Look, I, I spend a lot of time in Asia, I spend some time in Africa, sometimes in Europe, sometimes in the States. Based on what I saw last when I was in Asia, people are playing that style. This is the way, they want the game to flow, they want the game to, to get faster, and they just don't want whoever holds the ball to cross mid court, call something, wait, and start. So this is not really the way the game is played these days. If you had to remember something, it's like the ball does not stop. Don't freeze it, and you go into your offense. So actually, it's super easy. It's all about spacing, making good reads, leaving the middle of the lane open for players to roll or drive, to let your big guys go one-on-one. -on -one. Because the more you spread the flow, the less likely there will be a double team, the less likely there will be help, or if help comes, they're gonna have, they're gonna have plenty of time to see it coming. And it gives the players a lot of freedom. Now we go back to making good reads. That's what I say in the intro, you have to train and breed players in a different way. I was asked as a player to memorize the plays. Now, as a coach, I am teaching my players how to read the game. And it's completely the opposite. I was forced into something that, okay, we have eight plays against man-to-man, -man, we have seven plays against two-three zone, and I have to memorize all of that. And I have to set up my guys each and every time down the floor according to what the coach wanted me to do. Now, the game is not played that way anymore. The game is about what do you read? How do you react? There is something in comparison that I really, I really like to make for you guys. I'm not a big fan of rugby, but, you know, as a sports person, I follow sports, generally speaking. The All Blacks, which is the best team in the world, regardless of if they are world champion or not, uh, have a way of training and playing the game at the highest level. And I, I heard an interview of those, of those coaches and some of those guys. They tell the guys, play it as you see it. So there is no predetermined plays that you're gonna have and repeat constantly. This is not the way it works. So look, I have pretty much covered 
everything before we go into the videos, if we have time for this, and I'm sure we will. Um, just the tools or the new tools or the tools that have been revamped that we use now to uh, get our offensive sets go. You have option within the pick and roll. And there is a document that I want to share with you. It's European. It's very interesting. The approach of the pick and roll, what kind of adjustment you can make to a traditional basic pick and roll. The second is the via screens. Uh, that has been used for the last two, three years. Um, it is used in EuroLeague a lot. It is used in the NBA a lot. It is made for shooters. I'm going to show you what it is if you don't know what it is. Step up screen. The step up screen is like a pick and roll with some differences. Elevator, and I apologize for the poor joke. No thanks. I take the stairs. The elevator screen, you're going to find that a lot to get uh, shooters open. Three points line. Floppy armor, you probably know all of that. Um, the last thing that I want to share with you is we run the offense with the concept of series. And I'm going to give you an example, a very simple example, because most people are using it, are still using it, and it will be in use for a long time to come. The horns. So you don't go, for example, if you have your set with the horns, and you say, okay, we have horns one, horns two, horns three, or and it's confusing for the players. Your own is the own series, depending on your entry. Let's say your entry will be of the pass, your entry will be of the screen, your entry will be of a Iverson cut, for example, then you go into it. So you just say own series, instead of saying owns, owns four, owns five, or whatever. Okay, guys, we're gonna go. If you have questions, we can take questions as well. We're gonna go on the new sharing and we're gonna go towards the visual. Guys, don't be shy. If you have any questions in writing or questions in, I mean, orally, you wanna take over, just raise your hand, let me know, and we can discuss and and talk about it. Okay. The first one is a drag. Okay. The drag is a big guy coming from behind, setting a screen for a shot or for a drive. So, guys brings the ball up. This is a double drive. We're gonna see what, what we're gonna explain what is behind. We're gonna stick to the to the single to the to the drag screen. Double drag again. That's how you get in your sets. Uh, what you have mentioned, you take in the game these days the first good available shot. You don't wait forever to just to get a shot. You play as long as you need to get it, but you take the first Coach. available. Coach, is it is it possible to see the video? We can't see the video. Yeah. We're gonna go now. Double drag. Pachulia is the leading scorer on the Warriors roster of eligible players tonight. He's averaging just over six a game. The double drag is your two bigs. We're going to freeze it here. Your two bigs sitting on top of the key, preferably length extended, with two guys corner. And then you have one guy popping and one guy diving. Day day. And Dr. Murray, same thing. Uh, Again, point. first available shot. Three transitions, stretch five, Pau Gasol. We're gonna move forward a little bit.
So we're going to pause it for one second. Um, the, the drag screen and the double drags are ways to get into your office. Now, all you see is our quick shots now, but it's not necessarily the case. If you don't have a good shot, maybe you're going to go into your stagger office. Maybe you're going to go into your motion office. But basically, if you don't have the pass as an entry into your offense, so the guy keeps on ending the ball, single dry, double dry. Double drag, down low, and off, jump shot. Stop. So we go back to what we said before. The game is mostly played these days on principle. See, they don't call nothing. Off the double drag, they're going to go pick and roll, and off. Just like the play I showed you before, that's how the game is played. Good spacing, weak side occupied, far away, draw the defense, pick and roll action here. And a great turn. Well, you're a biggie, so Welch is great. Same situation, double drag, pick and roll and off. Double drag, ILO situation, not pick and roll, spacing for the shot. Excuse me, coach. Oui, yes. Uh, for some reason, we can't see the video. I don't know what's happening. Really? Wait, 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 wait. I'm going to try to fix that. Yes. Uh, 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 just wait, just wait, just wait. We we actually haven't seen the video from the from the start it, when you started. Yeah, from the start. Okay, just let me see if you have it now. Let me see if you have it now. Yes, we do. Okay. We have it now. Okay, yes. okay. I don't know if I can go back now. Uh, okay, yeah, let, sure. let, let's... Okay, I'm going to... I'm going to try to see if I can go back now. Let, let, let's go to what we have now. Okay, this is a Spanish pick and roll. The Spanish pick and roll is basically an extension of the normal pick and roll. But the difference here, one of your bigs is going to pick the ball holder and the other big is going to pick the big. So it's pick the picker. Same situation, pick, big, pick. So you have that pick, that situation here. Guy going around, back pick on the other big. He picked the ball holder. He's going to go to the hoop. He's going to look for the drive. He's going to pop for the three. Again, pick the picker, pop for the three. You're rolling now, Iverson cut, pick and roll. Uh, you see now, everything is a combination of basketball principle. The entry was of the pass after Iverson cut. And then they go into the Spanish pick and roll. Nothing fancy, nothing odd to remember for the players. It's just about the real. Do I have the lane open to drive into? Okay, I take it. Do I have the lob on the big going? I pass it. Do I have the shot here? He takes it. If he doesn't, we go end of pick and roll. Nice skip pass for the shot. You, you, you know spacing is key. Really, this is the most important part. Again, pick the picker. Uh, 
College basketball now, same. Big, big the picker again for the big. Okay, on to the next one. I'll try to see if I can go back um, on the videos to show you what you didn't see. Okay, step screen. Step up screen, I'm gonna pause it for a second, is effectively a pick and roll. Okay, you didn't see it. Usually the drag screen comes from behind the ball. The step up screen is by definition, a screen where you go towards the ball, coming from the baseline side. So, hard and holding, still in transition, guy stepping up, setting the screen, and they're gonna play from there. Look, the idea, the general idea, if there is something to be remembered, you need to create an advantage situation, no matter what it is. It's a one-on-one, -on -one, you beat your guy, you go to the basket, you make the defense collapse, you kick it back out, somebody takes a shot. You use the pick and roll. They go on top, you have the drive, the big rolls. This is an advantage situation. And you don't need to create tens in one offense. You need one. One advantage situation for one offense. That's all you need. And then you play on principle. Step up. The kick back out for the shot. Step up for the drive. Step up screen for the drive. Okay, it lasts about two minutes. We can just let it run. Let's move forward a little bit. You will notice the spacing remains the same. Guys wide, guys in the corner. Okay, we go on to the next one. So we covered drag, double drag, step up. And we go on to the next one. And I apologize for the screen. The veer screen. Okay, this is not that popular, but it's really something that you can get a lot of good value, added value to your offense. So basically, it's a big guy faking a step up and setting a pin down, a down screen for a shooter. That's basically what it is. If we want to formulate it like this, to verbalize it like this, if you want to explain it for your players like this. Then the big roles, So it's faking, setting for a shooter this time. Of course, the continuation will be the big diving. Okay, elevator. I made a bad joke. Remember, I said, no, thank you. I take the stairs. So the elevator is a double screen for a shooter. Why are you going to close the door here to the defender? and have your advantage situation here. It can be run in the middle of the lane, like they do, or it can be run on the side. Again, a elevator for the shot. We're gonna move forward a little bit. You see on the side now, same situation. 
Uh, you can call that a double screen, but uh, if you look at materials now, you're going to find it under, under that, under the elevator. The floppy. Okay, the floppy is, I'm going to pause it for a second. The floppy is an old offense, a really old offense. It, it's derived from, and take time to look tomorrow, from the old, very old single double from the stack offense in the 80s. It's basically wings coming off the screen on the baseline. Here I'm gonna show you, they cook it in a different ways. Okay, instead of having the two wings coming off the screen, left and right and the two bits down low, they just set another screen to free the big to the ball on the back peak. This is floppy. I'll let you, I'll, I'll let you see. So basically, coming off the screen and setting the pick for the big. And you see the continuation. The continuation, the ball doesn't stop. If we don't get the pass down low, then we keep on playing. They space out after the pass, four out, one in for the big to play. Give him space. On the pick. We're going to move forward a little bit. Just to give you an idea of how they run it. To the big of the cut, remember, officially the best way to score. Okay, now, you know him, no need to introduce him. Um, he has done a lot of good things at, at combining pick and roll, end of via screen, etc., etc. He run one of the best offense in the Euro League. Uh, just want to show you a couple of things that maybe you can incorporate in your in your strategies. And it's just again, it's based on principle. They have a diamond set coming off the screen, end off step up screen. Big rolling, good spacing for the three. This is to me exactly how the game is played this day at any level. So we just do it in slow motion, diamond set, coming off the screen, dribble end off, step up screen, spacing, big rolling and creating an advantage situation. And then, who takes who on defense? One guy has to make a choice, he makes the wrong choice, there is an open three. On to the next one now. Sorry for the commercials. Okay. I spoke to you before about series, the concept of series, and not the idea of calling God knows how many plays or confusing the players by saying, okay, this is one offense, but we're going to have some subdivisions and say, okay, one's, one's one, one's two, one, three, no matter. This is a very basic G League type of thing that has been reproduced all over the world. You can use it in FIBA basketball nice and easy, in your clubs, in your national teams, youth national team. Very basic, very simple. You start with a stagger. I have to see it. Stagger. Side. For the shot. The easiest. Stagger side for the curl. That's what we spoke about before. I read the game. Defense is trailing me. I curl. Stagger, same. He trails. I curl. And this is still within one offense. The boomerang. So it's going to be pass end off, space out, step up screen. The guy, the big is going to go in the middle 
and create this advantage situation. Hand off, pick and roll, guy rolling, lob pass, or the shot. Stagger, boomerang, step up, dive, pass. I show you another minute or two. Trail, boomerang, step up, roll, and pass back out. This is one of the main for me, one of the most important things is that you need to teach your bigs. By rolling towards the middle, you're gonna draw the weak side defense. When that happens, they cover you. Don't force it. Kick the ball back out for somebody to shoot it. For me, this is a must. Okay, we go to still some basic things. Um, maybe I'm gonna call Nicolas or the president. Do we need to rerun yeah. the two videos that we didn't see in the first place? Uh, no, I don't, I don't think it's necessary. Okay. Yeah, but okay. I, I mean, maybe for some of the people, some of the people who are following on Facebook might want to see that. So yeah, I think for the, benefit of everyone so it would be wise to go back to the beginning of the okay. video i'm going to try to yeah. see if i can do it uh, okay. let me see let me see uh, just give me a few seconds to see if, if i can Okay, then we're going to go back. Okay, drag screen. So the drag screen is a screen coming from behind at the end of the transition to get into your office. Defense goes under, take the three. That's a double drag. Again, snake dribble to take the shot. Double drag for the shot. Double drag. So we have both here. Uh, the, the single drag and the double drag. If you look at basketball these days, the Boston Celtics are using the double drag extensive. I would not say most of their offense starts, the entries start with the double drag, but it is something that's really something consistent in their game. I mean, they, they go th through that for the entry a lot a lot and then they go from there to stagger to a lot of different things single for the dunk all right guys um there is one yeah. last thing that I really want to show you. I don't know if I'm going to be able to, uh, that I want to share with you. Uh, let me see. Let me see. Uh, okay. Guys, in the meanwhile, if you have any questions, please feel free. Yeah. Please go ahead. 
Uh, no, I think you can uh, finish first and I'll ask uh, a couple of questions at the end when you're done. Okay. This is the last yeah. thing basically that I wanted to share with you today about the uh, pick and roll. I don't know if that's going to work. I'm going to try. That might not work. Um, Okay, there we go. Do you have it? I don't know. I don't know if you have it on the screen. Uh, no. Uh, let me see. What is this? Okay, you have a... A, a video the reject yes the and reject yes you have it i'm gonna finish with this quickly and then we can just have a discussion yeah. this is about the pick and roll concepts and that has been done by a scout uh, that works for a big yearly team um he came up yeah. with a number of things about the pick and roll. The one is a reject. The reject means that you're not taking the screen. You're going to drive away from the screen. Let me know if the video okay. doesn't work. It's, uh, well, it's loading. It's loading right now. Okay. Okay. Yeah. yeah. You have it now? Yes, we do, okay. but maybe okay. put it in full screen. Okay, I'm gonna try because it's very short. Okay, we're gonna rerun it quickly. Yeah. Ah. Okay, so the guy doesn't take the screen. He's gonna drive away from the screen instead of taking the pick. He's not yeah. taking it, baseline drive. Okay, that's the one, that's what they call the reject. Okay. Two, holding the screen. And you do that against one kind of coverage. It's when the big is really deep down into the lane. Okay. So basically they're asking the guy, the screener, to hold the screen a little bit longer to create space for the guy driving or shooting. You see, he holds, the guy doesn't switch, open shot. Okay. Old, same situation. On to the next one. I was telling you about the snake dribble. So the snake dribble is a change of direction from the point guard. When he goes around the screen, he's gonna have like that, well, if you look from the top, it looks like a snake somehow. I put the mouse on it. That's a snake dribble. Big screens, big step up, snake dribble, big dives for the shot. Here, snake dribble towards the middle to create the space for the drive. So you don't go straight full steam ahead. Eh? You just go in between, attack the lob and the dunk. That's all the forms of pick and roll that you can use. And you have to teach your guys how to, to use it. Okay, you're gonna see, you see a lot of that these days. Um, the change of angle. So, you know, basically, we said you can roll, the ball is here, you tell the big to come and set the screen. Now you tell people, okay, big, you come and you come the other way on that side. 
So you're going to go around, set your peak for the guy to come, snake, or straight to the basket. Here we go. The pick, the choice, the space. He's going to come the other way. Defense goes under, shot. And there is a, another one that I really want to show you. The split is important. We can just show it to you quickly. You know, when the big guy edges, okay, he shows big. We don't try to go around. We try to split. So there is no drop here. Right? Big edges, split the basket. I'm not going to show you all the passes. I mean, they have the wraparound pass, the low pass, the pocket pass. You know that. Everybody knows that. The, the, last, the last one, again, that I want to show you is, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to finish on this. Uh, in your league, in the NBA, they do that a lot. Uh, visually, if you don't pay attention, you won't see. It's basically your big clearing the way for your small wing to the basket. Okay, we're gonna, we're gonna see it again. Just watch number 15, the big number 15 black. Boom, right there. He's gonna hold that guy behind him and open the path for the point guard or for the guard for whoever has the ball to go to the basket. So look, there are multiple things on the pick and roll. And maybe it comes down to details that you guys must understand and read well. Reject, come back on the pick, on the post up and the release. So look, the pick and roll is a lot more than one guy handling and one guy picking and rolling. You have to make all the correct reads. Change of angle, the drive, and the clear out again. I don't know if they're gonna rerun it, but I just wanna rerun it for you quickly. Okay, change of angle, snake, boom, right there. You have it. He's gonna just seal the guy and let his guard go to the basket. Guys, thank you very much for your attention. Uh, I have yeah. covered pretty much everything that I wanted to cover, uh, offensively, mostly. What are the trends? How things are done at the highest level? How can we incorporate that into yeah. our basket? Now, if you want to yeah. have a Q&A type of thing, you are most welcome. Yeah, uh, uh, thank you, Coach, for that. I think that was a, a good amount of detail on how the game is played today, and uh, especially in uh, in the in the NBA and Europe, of course. And uh, I mean, I think most of the coaches have probably seen uh, what you what you've gone through. You know, on you know during games that they watch, uh, that is NBA, college basketball, and uh, and Europe. But I think to sum up uh, what you have said uh, from the beginning, uh, it seems to me like you said the game has uh, has moved from an inside game to an outside game where you know teams are emphasizing more on the on the shooting of the three point shot compared to you know to try and score down low like it, it was in the in the past. And uh, but also you say that I think for some parts of the world like Africa and I think Europe we still have big guys who who need to get some action around the basket so we can't 
uh, you know, all of a sudden forced them to go to the three point line. I, and look, uh, you, coach, I, I fully agree with you. Um, yeah. For for me, your bigs must get touches in the low block. They must uh, yeah. in our female basketball. Yeah. But for me, the key is what kind of yeah. spacing do we have around them? Do we are we capable of yeah. telling the guys, look, we're going to feed our big and we need to space out, give him space to play. And in that case, it's fine. But look, if we feed the bigs, you know, look, you have guards now who are 6'6". Six, six. The wings are 6'7", six, 6'8". Six, Inside guards are 6'10". If you don't give your big enough space, you won't be able to play. But look, I, I second, I concur with you. Ball must come down Yeah, uh, maybe just to, to add on to that, you know, for the case of Uganda, we, most of our guys, we're not going to have guys who are, you know, above six, seven, you know, most of our guys are six, seven coming down, uh, which is a bit of what you talked about, small ball. So I'm, I'm wondering if you could shed some more light on a small ball, because I think that is something that as Uganda, we need to adapt. I think, look, I, I, I... I was very curious. So I look at your national team. I look at your, at your team, coach. Uh, and yes, right, you don't have any seven yeah. footers. I don't think you have any seven footers or maybe a few. Uh, but look, you perfectly yeah. suited for, for small ball. Um, look, the, the big principle yeah. of small ball for the people who are still with us now. Um, you need a big spacing. You need guys who can handle and create. This is very important. You know, the Houston Rockets are the masters of small yeah. ball these days. And they try not to run a lot of pick and rolls. Um, if you notice, they in transition, they will give the ball to Westbrook. So he can beat his guy one-on-one, -on -one, go to the basket, and make yeah. the defense collapse. And that's what they want to do. So if you go towards that in your country, yeah. I think it's fantastic because guys will develop as players. Because from being a wing, you're going to have to become a wing. I'm going to have to end on the ball. I'm going to have to have the ability to read and pass, the ability to finish at the rim, to shoot the three. And that's, to me, a big bonus for the players. Defensively, you're going to go switching man to man. And yeah. saying that's going to be a big plus, a big bonus for, for, for the players. The thing, you might lose some games in the yeah. beginning. You might lose some games in the first season. But the long-term benefit, I think, is good for the club and for the national team because you're going to have the type of player that you need with the versatility yeah. that you need to go to the next level. That, that's my opinion. Okay, thank you. Uh, we have a question from uh, Brian Rigendo. He says, uh, about the half-court offense, what is your advice on combining offensive sets? Um, look, I'm going to indirectly. The first thing that you have to do as a coach, when you take over a club or a national team, you have to assess what the guys are capable of doing. And you're going to create your offense based on that. So don't come with your, I am the coach, this is the way I want things to be done, and we're going to do it this way. Coach, if you come to any club, that's, this is what you're going to do. You're going to look at the guys, make them scrimmage five on five, and see what they can do. I have shooters, I don't have shooters, I have bigs who can score, no bigs who can score, I have no bigs at all. And that's how you're going to create your offense. So there are no rules as such. The thing is, the slower, the slower you are, the more likely you put yourself at a disadvantage because the defense will get set and they're going to wait for you to come. So keep up the pace, find your entries of the pass, of the screen, single drive, double drive, stagger, whatever you want, and then flow into your offense. If you guys, if the players are not that basketball educated, do simple things. You go pick and roll and off. That's the easiest way. And that's what people do. Even at the highest level. If the guys have better IQ, basketball IQ, then you can go, an example, double drag into stagger and double stagger. I know it just words. That's just words, but I have people to research it. And maybe that's going to open up some ideas and say, okay, well, we can do that. 
But I'm dead against mid-court, stop the ball, call something, and let's see what happens. That injured us. Yeah. Uh, let me see if we have another question. I think that is it from the chat. Uh, maybe something that you said, you said something about players should be able to read the game. So I think uh, if I understand that, is that, that mean that uh, we're giving the players more freedom to play and the coach has to not want to control the game too much once you know the players are on the court playing? Very good point. Very good point. Uh, look, the team is a reflection of yourself as a coach. If you're a smart coach, they will play smart basketball. If you're a dumb coach, you're going to play dumb basketball. Really. But look, at the end of the day, what is better? You have to weigh the ball. Is it better for the guys to understand what they do because you taught them the right way to do it? Or is it good and you said the right way? Can we, as coaches, be less controlling? But give the guy the tools yeah. and the knowledge to play the game. This is, for me, the way forward. But I agree with you. Part of yeah. the control that we have, I think we must let go to a certain extent. Mm. Okay. Uh, let me see if I have another question in the chat. Still nothing else. Uh, maybe another thing. Uh, you talked about training. Training has to emphasize uh, mobility, versatility. And uh, I guess uh, from what you, you said, really, it means that the players have to be way more skilled than they have been in the past. So does that mean that our trainings have to emphasize a lot of skill, skill work and skill development, even, you know, in season? Look, Coach, this is a very good question. I don't think, because I looked at your schedule, I mean, it's quite heavy. I mean, you play once a week or twice a week sometimes, and you have the playoffs. I don't think you can improve. Yeah. I don't think you can improve players during the season. Players' development yeah. is during the off-season exclusively. Look, you're going to be too busy during the season yeah. to prepare the team. Look, you're going to go from game to game, okay? You're going to have to prepare for the game. You have at least one session to prepare for the game, formulate your game plan, explain it to the players, put it in place. After the game, you're going to have to do some, during the week, you're going to have to do some conditioning, etc., etc. So, yes, to the first thing, the first point, players are different animals now. Their skill set is much yeah. larger than it was before. I think it's difficult to teach guys already set in their ways, guys in their mid-twenties, for example, to change completely. But, you know, yeah. for the new breed of guys, you're under 15, under 17, under 19, under 21. That's where you stop acting and say, okay, guys, look, now, yeah, we emphasize this, this, and that because we want the game to be played in a certain way before. So, yes, your bigs will be able to do what the bigs are supposed to do, but not only that, he's going to have to be able to handle a little bit, to pass it a little bit, you know, all those things. But look, I think during the season, it's difficult. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, we have another question from Brian. It says that we don't seem to screen a lot. Applying it at practice makes it slow as well. Do you have a, prefer a preferred offense that still creates open shots without necessarily having many screens flowing right from, tra from the transition? Um, Did you get that? Yeah, I, I, I did. I did. Um, look, if you have spot-up shooters, still your best way is a pick and roll on top of the key because you're going to make the defense collapse. And that's probably the easiest way to get those guys to shoot the ball. Um, yeah. Right off the bat, you can have a... Look, again, if you have a dominant, very dominant player, and I know in your league, there are some like really, really good, really impressive guards. I mean, I've seen a couple of videos of guys who are like strong, skilled, powerful going to the basket. If you have that, don't use screens. I mean, not on a 40-minute type of thing, but, you know, 
on, on that basis. Give him the space to play one-on-one -on -one and beat this guy. Just put guys corner and 45 and you know, whoever helps, the player is going to receive the ball and take the shot. That's basically what it is. When the defense rotates, you're going to have the extra pass and all of that. But um, look, I, I, run, yeah. I, I, I run very basic set. I run owns most of the time. Owns is one screen, maybe two screens, and we just take it from there. That's something very easy, very basic, and easy for the guys to remember. Okay. Thank you, Coach. Um... I don't know. I don't think we have any other questions. Yeah, I think Brian said thank you so much. You have confirmed some of my thoughts. <laughs> Thanks to <Stuart>. me. <laughs> yes, yes. Uh, yeah, I don't think we have any more questions, but uh, maybe let me see. I was writing some things down. Mm. Yeah, I think one of the problems we have here in Uganda is that, uh, you know, we don't get to face some of the things that we you've just uh, demonstrated on uh, on the video and, you know, most of the things that you talked about. So I think when we go to the outside Uganda and the international level, we kind, kind of find it tough because we're not facing the same situations, you know, back home. So I think the major thing is going to be for us, you know, all the coaches, you know, hopefully those who have been able to tune in today to adapt some of these modern trends so that when we go to the international level, it's not something that seems, uh, you know, seems new and that we, need, we can't adapt to in that, you know, in the moment of competition. Yeah, I think it can be done. Um, I look, uh, yeah. Coach, I've spent quite a bit of time watching videos of the leagues, the league games, uh, some of the national team, I mean, the potential is here, really. Uh, you can really do something special. Yeah. Um, it's just a matter of time. Don't be in a rush. Uh, yes, you're going to have to make some adjustments yeah. to bring the level on par with what you want to achieve. But uh, look, I think the future is bright. Yeah. And, uh, look, it takes, doesn't take that much to take a big jump forward, you know, sometimes. Uh, Look, that's all. I, that's all I can say. Uh, but yes, yeah, I, I fully agree with what yeah. you. Yeah. Uh, locally, you have to start, you know, getting the guy into what you want to do. So when they get to the international scene, it's not like an eye opener. And it's like, oh, what is this? Well, how does this work? Yeah. So you know, they're already familiar. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I don't know whether the president has something to say. Uh, I wanted to. Hand it over to him. Maybe he could say something before I give my closing remarks as well. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Nick. Uh, mine is not much, only to say thank you and appreciate uh, Coach Arnold uh, for sparing some time for us uh, to try and uh, get to learn something from his uh, wisdom and experience uh, as a coach. Uh, thank you very much. We appreciate. Uh, we uh, can't take this for granted. Hopefully those that were able to tune in uh, uh, managed to learn a thing or two from you. So we will try to adjust uh, where necessary. Uh, as you have said, it takes some time. So we shall take it step by step to see that we adjust to the new trends of uh, the modern game. Thank you very much. Uh, Nicholas, you can take over. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, thank you, President. Uh, I think for me, from all this, I have a couple of takeaways, and uh, one of them was that the game has changed almost to advantage or to our favor as Uganda, uh, being that there's a lot of small basketball being played. So I think that that is good for us. So for all the coaches who are who are tuned in and are listening. Uh, we, we have gone up from the time when we used to complain that we do not have, you know, huge players, you know, seven foot players. We can still be successful with the players that we have, you know, so we need to, you know, go back and work uh, on our players. And the big thing also is that uh, we need to improve our skill, you know, tremendously so that uh, our players can be able to adapt to the, to the modern game. Uh, you also talked about mobility of the players, which I guess you're looking at, you know, quickness and being able to get up and down on the court. 
uh, which is, I think, a strength of ours. So if we add that to some skill, I think that will give us uh, a major advantage you know, on the international level. Another key thing you mentioned was that these players have to start these things probably at the under-15 level. So for all the coaches that are, are listening in or that are watching, that are involved with players at the you know, U15, you know, secondary school, I think this is a big takeaway for you. You need to make sure that you're, you're skilling the players so that when they get to the you know, high performance level, like you know, the senior national team or, or the clubs, it's not a challenge for them to adapt to the demands of the modern game. So yeah, I think for me, those were the, the two biggest takeaways and uh, hopefully all the coaches will adapt and uh, you know, try to incorporate a lot of what you've, you've shared. And, uh, you know, we can see Ugandan basketball improve uh, starting from home and obviously when we go to the international level. Maybe, Coach, I could ask you a question about uh, uh, three-on-three because three-on-three is something that, as Uganda, have taken a little bit of serious over the last couple of years. Uh, maybe you can talk to us about what you think three-on-three can do for players, uh, you know, especially the skill level and their playing ability. Yeah, look, it's it's complementary to um, two five on five basketball. Uh, you know, three uh, three on three was created originally to. Uh, it was a feature for guys who didn't want to play organized basketball. Let, let me put it this way, um, and then it became a competition on its own. I think it's really good for the guys to go three on three because, as you say. Five on five full, three on three off, it's completely different. You don't need all the running up and down the court. You're going to need a special set of skills to play one on one off court. You're going to have to be able to guard bigger, maybe faster, maybe slower, maybe stronger. And you don't have the luxury to make a lot of mistakes on the three on three situation. Five on five, sometimes you can hide defensively. I'm saying three on three, if you can't guard someone, it will show. So guys will have to work on their skills. If you don't have the skills to beat yeah. somebody one on one, it will show. Because from your side, you need to be really good at beating your guy one on one. That's my take on the subject. You're gonna need to rebound. Don't just yeah. rely on the bigs to rebound. Even if you're small in the three on three, you have to rebound. So I think it's a good thing that you know the five on five guys get to play three on three too. Okay. Okay. Thank you. So let me see if I have any other question in the chat. Uh, seems not to be much. Yeah, uh, Coach, thank you very much for this. I think uh, this has been the first of its kind for us here in, in Uganda. And we hope to have many more with you on, uh, you know, other subjects. And, uh, you know, I think Europe has... To be honest, I think Europe has become like the, it has to be credited for the transition of the game right now. You know, you know the, the players are being, have to, having to be, you know, really skilled and uh, more versatile. I think that is uh, in credit to Europe and uh, hopefully we can adapt some of those things. Uh, you know, most importantly, hopefully we can have you in Uganda sometime in the future to, so that you can be able to translate some of your knowledge and experience, you know, face to face with the coaches down here. Coach, thank you so much for your support. I really appreciate you, your kind words. Um, all I can say now is hopefully we can do some more online or yeah. on location. Uh, guys, the last yeah. thing, please. Thanks to the Federation of Uganda. Thanks to FUBA. Thanks to you for your time. Thanks to the president. And please stay safe, guys. Stay safe. That virus is still around. Uh, it seems that it's under control in most part of the world, but please. Keep yourself and your loved ones safe. Yeah, Thanks for yeah. having me, guys. I really appreciate your yeah. time. And thank you for to the participants. All right. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Thank Enjoy you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.